you guys, Dalen here, and welcome to my Infernoids guide. Now in this guide, I'll show you how to efficiently and cheaply get the Infernoids, and for those of you who do not know what that is, it's simply a 3-in-1 tool. It's a hatchet, a pickaxe, and a weapon all in one. It's the equivalent of a dragon hatchet and a rune pickaxe, but it should also be mentioned that while there are no combat requirements to use it as a weapon, it's not worth using it as a weapon. So, you know, most pickaxes or hatchets aren't worth it either, so that makes sense. So, you must have 92 fire making to obtain and use the infernoids, and you also must have 61 wood cutting to use it as a hatchet, and 41 mining to use it as a pickaxe. So, there are a few quests, and you need to have a few skills in, in order to do the Beacon Network mini game. one of which is completed the All Fired Up quest, which is an absolute must, which is what you need to do the beacons. You need to have completed Land of Goblins to light the Goblin Village beacon. You need to have 64 agility, which you can boost using Summer Pies, so the lowest level we could really use is 59. Level 42 construction and 56 smithing. Level 70 smithing or 59 construction, depending on what you use to repair one of the beacons, which I will go into later. 60 crafting and 31 prayer. I uh, see. I also did not know in here that you need to have 92 fire making to do the to do this. So it, please note that that I just didn't include it. I forgot. Uh, rewards to use the rewards you, to get the ring. The ring of fire is 62 fire making. The flame gloves is level 79 fire making, and the inferno aids is level 92 fire making. So, so you kind of do need 92 fire making because you need 90. Now you fire making is a requirement to light one of the beacons, so you need to make sure you have that as well if you want to get the inferno weights. You know, if not, if you're just going for ring of fire or flame gloves, it can be lower, but 92 would be the best way to do it. So, starting out on your run, get the supplies you're basically going to need is 280 logs of any type. We'll show a table at the end of the video that shows the approximate amount of time that you'll get from burning each log, because each log type gives a longer amount of time the higher tier you go up, and you can use, you can, you know, choose which one it will be best for you. The repair supplies, which I'll go over later in this video. Teleports, which I will also go later over later in this video. Lightweight clothes, like I said like Agile Armor, Wicked Robes, Boots of Lightness, Spotted or Spotted or Cape, and like. And a Beast of Burden is helpful. Really, any type you have will be somewhat helpful in starting to fill the beacons. When you're first going to fill your beacons, you're going to need to repair a few ladders and that kind of thing to get to the beacons. So what you're going to need is a hammer and a tool belt, a uh, hammer in your tool belt, and also a needle in your tool belt, so that you should have those. Two or four iron bars, three jute fibers, two or four planks of any type, and four or eight na nails. Now, when I say or, be that is my reasoning for that is because there are some, there is one beacon that you can use either construction or smithing. Like I said in the requirements, you can have 70 smithing or 59 construction. So just depending on what you use you that's what you're gonna bring and so if you're deciding to use construction of course you're gonna want more planks and nails but if you're using smithing you're gonna want more iron bars so it just depends on what hot what's higher and what you're choosing to do to repair and later in this video I will show you which beacons you're gonna need to bring those supplies so the following part of this guide will be filling up the beacons and where those beacons are and basically you can fill them up in any order you choose so you don't have to do it exactly in the order that I show here I'm just simply showing you where the beacons are in this map shown on screen as well as you know just where they are in in relation to that area so hopefully you'll be you guys will be able to kind of discern where it is if you guys have any questions where where um, beacons are you know you can just ask me in the comments that's cool when filling the beacons, what you're going to want to bring for almost for every beacon is tw at least 20 logs because that's the minimum you need to fill a beacon so you have logs left over. But also, if you have to repair something to get to that beacon, you also want to bring those supplies as well. Say for this Birthorp one, you're going to need to bring two iron bars. And if you're not sure what to bring, you know, just check out, take a look at my inventory and it'll tell you and I'll also tell you in this commentary. Um, pretty much, if you're gonna, if you're choosing to use a Beast of Burden, War Tortoise or Pack Yak would be ideal, but I think you could also get away with using a Spirit Terror Bird if you don't have the summoning level for that. Please take note of this God Wars Dungeon Beacon, that you, if your crafting level is not significantly higher than the one required to fix the 
windbreaker thing here that you're going to want to bring a restore or super restore pot so you can restore your stats because the of the the stat draining effect at the God Wars dungeon entrance. So this the the entire filling of beacons with logs takes much much longer than the actual the actual run itself because just simply because you're filling the beacons and you have to pretty much take a bank trip and all that stuff. So I would recommend either bringing tabs or a toggle zone ring or something that will get you to a bank quickly. You could use the the lodestone network to like Lunar Isle or whatever, but you can't use that really in above 20 wilderness, so you have to have another you have to have some other methods. <clears throat> so let me see. So like I said guys, make sure that you fill all of the beacons before you start your run because if you don't, you're not gonna you're not gonna make it really. And I've had people ask me what kind of logs they should use and it's really a personal choice. I will put at the end of the video a kind of table on the approximate time of burning for each of the beacons. So that shouldn't be a problem. And you just make a judgment. If you if you do it with not many fuck ups you should be able to do it within maples and still have time to spare. I did my run in about 10 minutes and I messed up a bunch. Like, I'm not lying, I messed up a lot and I thought I didn't make it, but I did. So, yeah. And pretty much also, to note in this video, I didn't receive the Ring of Fire or the Inferno Glo or Inferno Aids and that's because I already have them and you can only have one at a time, so that's, my re that's the reason why I don't have those why I didn't receive them in this video. Now this beacon right here that I that just finished up, basically that's the one that you need either construction or smithing for. So you either need to bring the two bar bars or the planks and nails, depending on what skill you're using to repair the beacon. This one you're just going to need construction, so you bring nails and planks. And that's pretty much all for filling up the beacon. So next up I'll show you what you need to bring in your inventory and how to do the entire run. Guys, when it comes to gear, what you want to wear during your Inferno Aids run, definitely what I recommend would be any clothing that gives you lightweight, like Agile Armor, Wicked Robes, both of Lightness, Spotted or Spotty, or Cape, then that's my reasoning, is so you can run longer and that kind of stuff. Make sure that you don't bring anything that you're, that you're not willing to lose, like if, you want, if you're going to use Pendant's gloves, make sure that you, you, may, you just don't want to do that. You don't want to lose that. You don't care about losing them in case there are PKers or something in the wilderness. Usually there are not really, and even if there is, you know, you could always just ask them. I'm doing Inferno Aids run, you know. Well, I, I don't really have anything on me, and maybe they'll let you go. Um, also, would recommend maybe if you want have an enhanced Excalibur with you for healing, make sure that you have your equipped an Amulet of Glory and a Combat Bracelet if those are the two methods that you're using to get to Edgeville in the monastery make sure that you basically it's really common sense for me is like just equip any of the teleport items you're going to use make sure you have lightweight gear maybe enhanced excalibur you can use explorer's ring for the run charges and if you're choosing to use that and you know any kind of capes or anything you want to wear it doesn't really matter just make sure it's lightweight and not really heavy and you're willing to lose it if in case you do die so for the inventory that you're gonna want to have, you're gonna pretty much wanna gonna want to have what I have here. Um, you're gonna want to have a spirit terror bird and scrolls if your summoning level allows. If not, you can bring super energy potions. But I would highly recommend having a spirit terror bird as it is much easier. You have food of any type. You know I brought sharks, but you could easily get away with like monkfish, any kind of that stuff, lobsters even. But you just have to be kind of careful. And really the only reason you need food is just for when, for the God Wars beacon because you can get, you will get hit by the snow and also in case the wolves hit you like they did to me because I was stupid and didn't pray. Um, you're going to want to have Trollheim tabs or runes depending on if you've completed Love Story or Edgar's Roos. And the, tr while Trollheim tabs, like the Troll Edgar's Roos and Love Story is not a requirement to finish or to do it. It's very highly recommended as it's the only real way, good way t to teleport to Trollheim. Or you could actually have the Lunar Spell as well, I think. Um, super Restore Flask or Vial because for the 
when you're lighting the God Wars beacon, like I said, the snow drains your stats there. Um, a game's necklace is optional in case you do want to use a game's necklace to teleport to Birthorp. Of course, the lodestone works just as well and actually is a tad closer than the game's necklace teleport. You're going to want a goblin village spear, which I will show you how to get in this video. I just happen to have not pictured it in this um, picture and that's really all you really need there could be a few other things that I've forgotten but this tender box also should be in your tool belt just take a note of that as well but it should be in there so that shouldn't be a problem so basically in this clip I'm gonna show you where and how to get the goblin village sphere which is the easiest way to teleport to the goblin village so basically just take a molten glass and two lots and go to the Durgish Khan city and go up into the northwest corner of the city and you'll see a little a goblin and it'll and when you right click it will say talk to or buy sphere and just go click buy sphere and go to buy goblin village sphere and he'll give you a goblin village sphere and that's the easiest way to get to the goblin village now for the actual inferno ads run itself you don't really need to do exactly all of them in the same order that I do, but I do recommend that you start out in the wilderness at the highest level and work your way down. So go to the one by the agility course, the, well, the agility course, do that one, and then run south through that gate you see past the ice knights and the portals and there and then and then the next one should be close to that i'm assuming that you all filled up your beacons before that issue you should know where they are now i had not done in a run in a long time and so i definitely fucked up a few of my things but like i didn't summon my spirit terror bird because i'm an idiot um so do that make sure that you, you if you're using a spirit terror bird summon it so you don't like mess up like i did uh I also recommend maybe bringing some summoning potions so you can restore your your special bar or just bring some super energies for when your special bar is too low because you, the God Wars dungeon will uh, the God Wars dungeon beacon will lower your spec bar for your familiar so you're gonna want to take that into account. I didn't so I kind of messed that up a little bit. I this is not by far a perfect run. And if I could do it with messing it up as much as I did with maple logs, you guys should definitely be able to do it uh, after you study it for a while. And you don't need, like I said, you don't need to do all these in order. Um, in fact, the way I learned how to do it, I teleported to different places. So as long as you remember that you've done that beacon, you could really do any the teleport beacons in, in different orders. Like you could go to the birth orb one and then go to the God Wars dungeon and then to the Trollheim one. Or you could go to like Black Knight Village and then go back to Trollheim. And, you know, it doesn't really matter which one you do. Like this is a part where I like screwed it up because I thought that this was one of the beacons, but it turned out that it wasn't. It was like the level. Th it was um, the Trollheim beacon instead of the one I thought it was. So kind of screwed that up. But so just keep running past this beacon because I messed this up. I apologize for that. That I messed it up and I realized that I did. So you know. Um, I'm, I'm prone to making mistakes a lot, so, you know, whatever, but the run itself really isn't too bad, like I said, you don't have to do it in the same order I do, but however, I will recommend that you do start with the wilderness, in the high level wilderness, run down the side, and do all the ones in the wilderness, and then teleport, uh, basically the way that I do it, in the, or, and I was also shown to how to do it, or taught how to do it, um, basically you start at the highest level wilderness beacon you do all the ones in the wilderness um on the sides like up the side of the wilderness and then you teleport to goblin village and you do that beacon like i'm doing here and then you could teleport to trollheim go to the god wars dungeon one teleport back to trollheim using runes or tabs whichever one you're using and then do the other trollheim beacon then teleport to birth orb do that one and then Teleport to the Edgeville Mon to the monastery. Do the Black Knight Beacon. Teleport to Edgeville. Do the Edgeville Beacon. Hop the wilderness. Or no, run. Oh I, well, it'll sh I'll show you also in this video how to do it. But you also then you'll just run across the GE Bridge. Um, hop the wilderness barrier. Light all the beacons across the wilderness barrier. Then run to the old the odd old man beacon. Light that one and then go to the Patadermis and light that. Now, if you guys couldn't follow what I just said, you know, just watch the video and that's how I pretty much do it. Like I said, you know, 
the actual running around and teleporting, you don't really see that. So also just keep in mind that you should know where all these beacons are because you should have filled your beacons previous to this. So I'm expecting you know where these are, but you know, I don't, you may have forgotten, you may have filled it. Like I did, I didn't do, I filled my beacons one day and then did the run the next and I think I kind of little paid for that a little because my brain just like went and I forgot about it. Forgot like what I was doing. But anyways, um, this is the part where I got damaged a bunch and I don't really know why, but I did. So I would recommend keeping on Protect from Melee the entire time as I have like, I have 99 defense and I still got hit oh, so much. I think I came close to dying at one point, but I was kind of just stupid here. So I would definitely just um, recommend, you know, putting on Protect from Melee. Definitely protect from range at these trolls unless you're 138 combat where then they won't attack you anymore but mm, I, I'm assuming that if you're 138 well I guess I don't I can't really assume that because some 138 should just do combat and nothing else but hopefully that you would know that you don't get attacked here and that you if you're 138 you know how to do it but I actually have friends that have 138 and they don't know what the infernoids is so that was kind of a stereotype and I apologize for that um, yeah, here got a bit damaged, mostly because of these wolves up here, but, you know, whatever. This is gonna be the beacon that you also drink your super restore potion, because this is where the god wars, of course, uh, drain your stats. And if you don't have high enough um, fire making or whatever to kind of withstand this, you're not, you're not gonna do, you're not gonna be able to light it, so make sure that you, either you have significantly higher fire making than the beacon requires or remember to bring a super restore potion or a flask either one now something that i did in my first run and i didn't do on this one was i did the god wars dungeon beacon and then teleported back to trollheim just so you know it's easier to remember that you've done it and if you can keep track that you haven't done it yet and just decide to do teleports in different orders by all means go ahead just make sure that you've done all of them because the worst thing it could happen to you pretty much would be you finished your run at the powder dormus beacon and then you check and you realize that you haven't done all of them and your time's up and that's just like the worst thing that happened because you go through all the time to light the beacons and then it just ends up that you didn't so it kind of sucks but whatever you know um i would definitely say that getting the inferno aids despite all the effort that you need to put in to do it and honestly it's not really that much effort but i guess it could be to some people i definitely would say that it's worth doing because especially if you are tight on cash because it saves a lot of money if you're doing wood cutting and it's because it saves you from buying a dragon hatchet so and also it just gets you good better fire making xp no i did it i did the what the I, did, I got 99 fire making before the bonfire update, so I know fire making is much easier. But of course, the ring of fire and the flame gloves will definitely boost your experience. You know, that's, that's cool. Um, there are many different ways to teleport to Edgeville, just by the way. Uh, you could use the Edgeville lodestone if you want, even. But, uh, but I use a glory, just because I had one. But you could also use the Padwana teleport, I think. I don't even remember, not even Padwana. It's um, one of the Ancients teleports. I'm not exactly sure which one it's called, but you could use that. You could use Edgeville Lodestone. You could teleport to your house and use a Mounted Glory. You could use Glory, you know. Either way, it doesn't really matter which way you go. It just needs to make sure that you have a teleport that will get you to Edgeville um, quickly. You know, Lodestones are cool, but if you're kind of using normal logs, I definitely wouldn't recommend it because it does um, cost game ticks. And of course you want to save as many of those as you can if you're running on like normal logs because those burn less time than I'm using. Of course, for a decent amount of time versus cost, I definitely would say ma maples would be your best bet because maples give you about 13 minutes. I can do a run on an average of 8 to 10 minutes, so that gives you an extra 3 minutes of fudge time if you mess things up. And I messed things up significantly here and I still got a 10 minute run, so you know, it's not that it's not really significantly bad so you know I think 
maples would really be the best to use. You know, if you, if you are just don't have thing, teleports unlocked or whatever, you could always just use magics and do a lot more running and stuff. Oh, basically also, just a note real quick, that there is another beacon in the wilderness. I didn't notice that. I forgot about it, and so I had to re-jump over the wilderness barrier, so don't do that until you get to you light this beacon, because I kind of, it's another one of my screw-ups. But, anyway. You'll also notice here that I don't receive message, I won't receive a message saying that I got the Ring of Fire or the Inferno Ed, and that's because I already have one, and I didn't want to drop mine so I could get a new one. So you will get messages in your chat box. There will be pop-up screens on your chat box that basically say, congratulations, you lit this many beacons and you got your reward. So you, you'll be informed what reward you get when after you've light, lit X amount of beacons. So yeah. And then basically you just go to King Roland in the Rock Castle to reclaim your rewards. I don't show that here, but that's really all you do. You just go to the King King uh, Roland in, or Ronald or whatever his name is in Brock Castle. Talk to him and say so you let the Beacon Network and that you need your rewards. He'll give you rewards and there you go. Get your Infernoids. Congratulations. But you know. Anyways, so basically just to recap, start in the high level Wildy. You know, go up and go up there you know, run across, run down the wilderness, you do your teleports, then teleport to Edgeville, light all those beacons, and then just run to the Patodermis one and do that. So pretty much that's how you do a run. You know, if you don't understand anything, you know, you definitely PM, send me a PM or leave it in the comments. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I will reply to you. So anyways, I will be moving on now to frequently asked questions and all that stuff. So we'll be right back. What you see on screen right now is the table or the burn rates of each log. This is really quite simple to understand. Basically regular logs will give you about 13 minutes, oak logs will give you about 13.5, all the way up to magics will give you about 18 minutes. Now to me, maples would be the best option because one, they are pretty cheap and two, they give you a decent amount of time, they give you 15.75 minutes, that's more than enough time, especially if you have all the teleports and things that I show you that you need to have in this video. Of course, you could always upgrade or downgrade anything that I use, you know, it doesn't really matter. Really, the only required teleports that I would recommend are the Goblin Village Sphere and the Trollheim teleport, either way, on how you get those, the rest could really all be lodestone stuff and that's really quite simple to unlock. So I definitely would say make sure you have Trollheim teleport and Goblin Village Sphere and you should be per should be fine. So here are some frequently asked questions that I get about the Infernoids in general. One is why should I get the Infernoids? Definitely because one, while you're training woodcutting you will be getting some fire making XP on top of that and if you are doing like say arctic teaks or maples or something that or some logs aren't very valuable that you kind of are just like dropping or something or are only banking because it's a close bank um it will incinerate some so you will get um less you get less logs and so if you're chopping magic to use i wouldn't recommend using that but if you're doing just drop tri drop power cutting really you know it'll help you because you just have less logs to drop and it doubles as a pickaxe so I mean it's only a rune pickaxe so but you still save about 18k if that's um, a problem for you another one is what log should I use like I've said earlier in this guide definitely would recommend using maple logs because they are the best in my opinion cost versus time that you get um, another question that I usually get is what things do I need to have for it and what like a must what I believe is a must to have besides the already the requirements are weight reducing gear I highly highly recommend the, the Trollheim teleport and the Goblin Village Sphere both of those require quests but both those quests are quite easy uh, another thing that I also would recommend having would be 52 summoning for a spirit terror bird now why you can use super energy potions and those are really just effective as effective you know a spirit terror bird is just so much um, seems so much simpler to me that you could use how hard is it it's not very difficult you know if you basically have a good memory on which on how to do the run or if you just split screen your computer watch me or any other guide maker do their do their run and just follow that you should have no problem 
doing the run and it's not very difficult the only hard part and it's not really even hard the more annoying part of doing the inferno Nights run is just filling the beacons because that just takes a lot longer than the actual run and then the last really important question, not really important, the frequently asked question that I get is are the flame gloves and the ring of fire worth getting? Now, I have people that ask me, sh they don't have 92 fire making, but they have the required fire making to get the flame gloves and the ring of fire. And they say, is it worth doing the Inferno Raids that run once to get those rewards so you can use those XP boosting rewards to get the Inferno Raids? Now, personally, I did not do that. But I definitely would say if you are on a tight budget or if you just want to level up faster, definitely, you know, it's worth doing because if you get the flame gloves or the ring of fire, it will definitely boost your XP and it'll make fire making a lot, you know, faster and you will spend less time fire making and really this entire process takes maybe half an hour to an hour depending on if you use a piece of burden to fill your beacons or not. So I definitely would say if you're on a tight budget or if you just want to do this in front of age run, you know, worth doing, you know, it may even be worth it to you to try it out once before you do in front of age so you know you can do all of, all 14 beacons because the flame gloves and the ring of fire, you, you need to light less beacons for that. So if you want to just do a test run, you know, it would definitely be worth trying out and you know, you can get your flame gloves and your ring of fire on top of, you know, just having a test run. So there you have it guys, my Inferno Aids guide. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. If you have definitely any questions, comments, or concerns, you know, just leave them in the comments. I will definitely get back to you. I am pretty good, you know, about replying to comments that, you know, merit having, to merit my replying to. Um, you know, the credit that I give to this video, the, the guide itself was, was compiled and commentated by me. I recorded all the clips and all that stuff. Um, any of the pictures or most of the pictures that were not taken personally by me and a lot of the information that I got off the unofficial RuneScape wiki and the way that I learned how to do the Inferno Aids guide in the first place was by, done by Jam Opbrod. His YouTube name is du Dooms and he's not, I don't think he's a very famous RuneScape ma video maker but you know this is where I learned how to do that and so I wanted to give him credit for that. And so anyways guys, like I said, leave any questions or comments below and I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.